If you have ever attended a performance driving school you probably slid around in a skid car. It's usually a rear-drive car mounted on a four-wheeled platform that can raise and lower the car to simulate a loss of front or rear traction. Some schools set up figure eight courses with cones you can knock down when you lose control. The instructor sits in the right seat and raises and lowers the car. It's humbling, a riot, and you learn a lot. So Skidgar decided to make a skid bike trainer, and I rode it last month in Las Vegas, along with three Nevada Highway Patrol motor officers, Shannon Serena, Ted Gosser, and Marty Vowinkle. Dane Pideresi, the U.S. importer, skid bike slash car slash fire truck is made by Cedar Grins Mechanklin Tam, Gotland, Sweden, met us in a bumpy parking lot and we all got a chance to try this creation consisting of a Honda CRF 250L on a platform Pideresi could raise and lower by remote control. Skid bike is a chance for riders to feel the loss of front or rear traction, Pideresi explained without risking life and limb. That last part is important, and the previous best place to learn these lessons was on a dirt bike and ensconced in a lot of padded riding gear. Skid bike is safer than a dirt bike and the adjustability of the platform guarantees that the rider will lose traction. Dirt bikes can be ridden so slowly and carefully that traction loss isn't always part of the equation. Pideresi had us all try a few things like increasing throttle at lean angle to lose the rear, increasing brake pressure at lean angle to lose the front. He had it so loose that we were sneaking on the throttle and massaging the brakes just to keep the bike moving forward and not completely sideways. We all started to hang off the bike in search of traction and we all came away smoother as a result. Each of us tucked the front and spun the rear a lot with zero injuries, though I certainly had a few heart-in-the-mouth moments when the front let go in that all too familiar panic when the handlebars go from giving feedback to light nothingness. The first time I lost the front I instinctively put my foot out but it simply landed on the decking surrounding the foot pegs, so no damage. Mistakes are allowed on the skid bike. We all starting playing with losing and saving the front and back by modulating brakes, throttle, lean angle, and body position. The grip was so light, it reminded us of sliding a car around on a sheet of ice with the slightest inputs creating big results. And like a car in an empty icy parking lot, skid bike put us at the limit of grip with little risk, allowing us to get comfortable with the bike moving around underneath us. Over the years, I've sampled many riding simulators and nothing comes close to the real feel, safety and instruction of the skid bike. To date, it's the safest and best way to learn to ride, and learn the limits of grip, with relatively little risk. But there are some limitations, mostly the recommended speeds. Pideresi wanted us to ride at a maximum speed of 20 miles per hour, which was easy to exceed. Over 20 miles per hour, Pideresi told us, the skid bike starts to store too much energy and can really snap back and unseat the rider. The unit is safe above those speeds but it could be pretty violent when it regains traction. Part of the challenge was then keeping an eye on the speedometer and doing your best to stick to the 20 miles per hour maximum. The skid bike platform is quite wide and the parking lot we rode in had several obstacles to avoid, like abandoned cars, a chain link fence and even a hut like building. The three officers and I did take out a few cones before coming to terms with its width, but managed not to damage anything expensive. The skid bike's feel is much heavier than most motorcycles and that takes some adjustment time. Once rolling, it has a motorcycle feel with the usual controls doing the usual things but with gravity on vacation, but still heavy feeling. Not a deal breaker, but something to consider if you plan to use it as a new rider training apparatus. Skid bike is an excellent way to get riders exploring the boundaries of grip and feeling the loss of traction, and is also a great way to get a brand new rider to learn the clutch, gearbox, brakes and balance. It's a little goofy to get rolling, but once you get the clutch out in first gear the CRF becomes very motorcycle-like, albeit hefty and wide. It's basically impossible to fall off, and the three officers and I had no crazy moments. 
certainly over-aggressiveness and too much speed would combine to create significant drama, but Serena, Kulker and Vowinkle were exceedingly smooth and really enjoyed their time beyond the edge of grip. Two of them were veteran dirt bike riders and you could tell they had learned a lot from their time off the pavement. Pideresi has a KTM skid bike in the works and I asked if the larger bike would mean more real-world speeds. Yes, our recent tests were conducted at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour with no problems, because the heavier KTM doesn't get as upset as traction is lost or gained, Pideresi revealed. But he is leery of the stored energy higher speed slides would create. We could feel this stored energy and it focused us all on how the sliding bike came back in line just as much as how we got it out of line. If you've ever had a car fishtail or swap on you, you know this feeling of stored energy looking for an escape. Pideresi is worried about a swap, 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 high shine. One solution would be to strap the rider onto the bike with a harness, but I'm not sure higher speeds are necessary to gain the lessons skid bike delivers. It would just be a whole lot more fun. And this thing is fun, while teaching lessons some of us have learned at high price tags. Like ABS and traction control, skid bikes design and technology allows riders of all levels to make mistakes without crashing to the ground.